are tax exempt bonds. There's also sale tax exempt bonds on public public safety and health um, to not to exceed fifty two million five hundred thousand dollars. Are these going on the ballot, or they have been no, approved this is, already? This is for the budget tomorrow. Oh, okay. These are sale of bonds, not issuance of bonds. Mm. And then Jane Kim is uh, posting a notice of issue of bonds for California Municipal Finance Authority for City of No School, not to exceed $40 million. There's also something which is really important for people of our neighborhood. There's an administrative code uh, increased minimum compensation hourly rate um, for employees of city contractors and other nonprofit corporations or, comp or uh, public entities to $15.86 per hour on uh, July 1st, 2017, uh, $16.86 hours July 1st, 2018 and followed thereafter by an annual cost of living increases. Um, it's been on calendar and off calendar since March. Mm. Who is this for? Uh, Nonprofits? It's an administrative code change um, to increase the minimum hourly compensation rate for employees of city contractors. You know, that's not gonna make it easier to extend, extend social safety net service to the lowest income neediest people. And uh, that measure is by Chi Lee, Kim, and Fever. And then there's another one uh, by Chi Lee and Kim uh, to increase the rate, the same rate, um, for all city contract employees. Yeah, so the whole point of the city not owning these buildings and having a nonprofit on them is because the nonprofits have lower expenses and you get more you get more service for the amount of money you spend. Then, uh, they're on um, so the ninth, which was Monday. Why I'm not going for Jane at Land Use, there was a hearing on uh, cannabis retail and medic and medical cannabis dispensaries in Chinatown prohibit cannabis retail and medical cannabis dispensaries in Chinatown's mixed-use district was sponsored by Peskin, Kim, Ree, Tang, and Fever. Um, uh, and then... Um, Can I talk about James? There's also a building code um, change, uh, which would bend the building code, to extend the times for existing buildings, replace the accommodation either to have all primary entries and paths of travel into the building accessible to persons with disabilities, or to receive a city determination of equivalent facilitation, technical infeasibility, or unreasonable hardship to extend the period for granting extensions for those deadlines to extend the time to submit the, to the Department of Building Inspection report on disability access improvements um, uh, program to the Board of Supervisors and uh, to eliminate the administrative fee for, uh, for um, implementing that. Can I? Just one, one point about raising the minimum wages for nonprofit. There. And today, in front of public safety, uh, there was a hearing about the closing of the skilled nursing facility and subacute units in St. Louis. I'm done. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. There actually, when Jane Kim raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour, and a number of cities did as well, they were actually considering having, what it was initially focused on was raising the wages of fast food retailers, primarily be, who, who were not unionized and they seemed to have a problem getting them unionized. That was the focus of it. 
there was actually, in many of these cities, an effort to get a carve out for a slightly lower minimum wage for nonprofits. Not higher, lower. Well, um, uh, um, let, let's, let, let me just go a little bit further about that. The primary cost of living in San Francisco is housing. And no matter how much new housing we build, there's going to be a, a disparity between the need and the availability. Because you, you're talking about you'd have to build like half a million units yeah. to meet the need. Yeah. That's so economists, what they call that is a, a, like a closed market. And what happens in a closed market is no matter how much money is available, the market will rise to that level. So. When you give someone a $15 an hour minimum wage, all you're doing is ensuring that their landlords are going to charge more for rent. Yep. It doesn't increase their ability to live in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, you know, we lost a lot of people with the last earthquake. It's, the, it's probably the only thing that, that drives them out is either the economy collapsing or earthquakes. Yeah, the recession. Yeah. The recession, a few people left, the, uh, and the, the earthquake that actually a lot of people left California, the Bay Area, after that earthquake. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you all for coming. Okay, thank you so, for us. okay, then we are signing off. Uh, you know, uh, I've got al almost infinite power now. I noticed. Yeah, uh, I don't, okay, here we go. Let, let me just make one more little comment. Okay, okay. You know, I think you're seeing with Jane Kim a, a tendency where she's just a more person. I want to get more, I want to get more. And really, it's not really focused on homeless people or disabled people or seniors. It's really focused on working people. Those are her Everything focus. Everything is, yeah. That's her focus. And when she comes in and, you know, tries to present that she's, she's representing us, disabled, very low income, non-working people on fixed income. That's, that's just not really true. It's just no. not true. Okay. okay. Hi. You like the water? Take it, take it, take a bottle. I, I filter it. I, I have a water filter. I saved the bottom for you and for out. How often do you change the filter? Uh, it's one of those things that's good for 30,000 gallons. Okay, don't need to take more. That's a lot of gallons, I know. Well, I've had, okay, well, the thing is, uh, it, it, when, when it's no longer useful, it stops working and I go get another one. Oh, does it clog? I don't know. How do you know that it's not working? Well, uh, I got one. I got I got one for my daughter. Actually, I got one for my ex-husband. You know, and it turned out he didn't use it at all. And uh, when when my look, when my daughter was cleaning up his apartment, uh, she, you know, she she and her husband took the. I said, take take the water filter for God's sake. And he never used it. So do you remember this woman who presented from uh, Gautier, Suzanne, just la our last meeting about the water quality, about yeah. the Public Utilities Commission issues? So she said a bunch of things that were kind of not really well defined about what the new water from this San, San Bruno water aquifer, uh, well, yes. what the upshot of that was going to be. And it sounded very much like a similar situation to Flint, Michigan, where uh, something about the water, either the pH or something else, was going to cause that water to leach more lead out of the plumbing systems. And almost all plumbing systems have lead in them somewhere. OK, um, first of all, I. Uh, what Flint did not do, or the people that were charged with that, they did not put the element in the water to stop the leaching. Yes. It was something they were supposed to add to the water and didn't. And when they diverted the water, for, you know, from 
uh, wherever they diverted from into, you see, they changed, they changed where they diverted the water from into Flint, Michigan, and they didn't put the stuff mm -hmm. in it they were supposed to do to prevent the, the uh, pipes from corroding. So what was the ultimate? No, thank you. What was the ultimate fix? That was not the ultimate fix. The ultimate fix was they went this back to their old water supply. But they're still, yeah, but they, you know, so it would cost. This is what Suzanne was a little bit, I don't want to cover, we'll cover. Uh, This is what she was a little bit confused about. There actually isn't anything you can really add. Because if you add a, an acidic compound, it increases the salinity of the water, which is another negative outcome. It's another thing that lowers the quality. There's really, if indeed that is the case, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, but if that is the case, what you're going to see is that the, when the water department tests the water, it, same thing as Flint, it's going to test fine. But when it actually comes out of the tap, it's going to have lead in it. And to me, it's, doesn't, it seems like it's possible that it could be a coincidence that all these lead poisoning issues with the school are happening at the same time as we change the water over. It could just be a coincidence. But I think it's something that you ought to They've be looking They've always into. had a problem with the schools and lead poisoning. It's those damn machines, those things that you go to and you press something, you drink the water out of it. Oh, the, do you yeah. the, the sinks themselves are uh, metal and have lead paint on them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know that this came up some years ago. Almost all plumbing, modern plumbing, new plumbing even, the seats, they put a, a 